What is this abomination that I see before me? How dare you defile the sanctity of my wedding with your filthy presence? How could you have the audacity to sneak into my celebration when you are nothing but a wrench beggar who should be groveling on the streets? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you talking to me? I thought you might have mistaken me for someone else, since you seem to have such a low opinion of me. Maybe there's another miserable, penniless soul here who shares my misfortune? Maybe we could find each other and be friends, since we are both so unwelcome here. Wouldn't that be lovely? Don't play dumb with me, you pathetic worm. You know very well that I'm talking about you. Who else would I waste my breath on? And how pathetic you are to admit that you were poor. But I suppose it's the only thing you have going for you. A shred of self-awareness. I always thought that people like you were too ignorant to realize how worthless they were. But I guess you proved me wrong. Well, it's hard to forget something that you keep rubbing in my face. So I guess I should thank you for enlightening me about how poor I am. You see... I never really thought of myself as poor before, but then I met you, and you made sure to show me how inferior I was. So I'm just so thankful that I've had the opportunity to hear it from you again, and again, and again. Well, I'm amazed that you are so oblivious to your own condition. After all, everyone else can see it. I guess it was only a matter of time before you woke up, haha. <laughs> I mean, don't you think it's just a little bit pathetic that your brother is going to be a doctor and you only have a high school diploma? I guess Charlie got all the brains in the family, huh? And you got, well, you got nothing really, huh? Yeah, you're right about that. I was never good at studying in school. I think everyone knew that. Maybe I just wasn't meant for them kind of thing. And because of that, even though I was the older sister, it always felt weird to see Charlie succeed so much. Oh, I'm sure it did. You probably felt like your life was over before it even began, and that you were always living in your brother's shadow, right? Well, I thought you might understand how that feels, since you're unemployed and all. What did you just say to me? Are you trying to insult me? Well, nice try, but your words have no power over me. Unlike you, I don't need to work because I don't have to. That's why I don't have a job. It's really that simple. But if you must know, when I was working, I was always praised for my performance and was a star employee. So it's not like I can't. I just don't need to now. Wow, that's amazing. That's really so cool that you gave up a career and financial independence just because you're getting married. I know what you're implying. But like I already told you, it won't work on me, because at the end of the day, I know you're just a pitiful, poor, stupid little person who doesn't have a clue about the professional world that I do. So I guess there's no point in trying to explain my actions to someone like you, is there? Anyway, there's actually something I wanted to ask you. A little favor, if you don't mind. Really? You have the audacity to ask me a favor? Go ahead, spit it out. I'm sure I'll be thrilled to do anything you command of me as a lowly, poor person. Well, good. I'm glad that you know your place. You should always obey your superiors. But I was hoping that you could do me a small favor and not sit at the table reserved for family. You don't want me to sit at the table where the rest of our family is going to be sitting? Are you out of your mind? Do you realize what you're asking? You do know that I'm the only family that Charlie has left, right? And sitting at the table for a wedding is important, since it symbolizes the two families that are joining together as one through the wedding. Well, that's exactly the problem. You see, if everyone at the table sees that the only family that Charlie has is you, well, I'm just terrified that my family will start to associate all of the horrible things about you with Charlie and judge him for his sister. Do you get it? Ugh, don't fret about that. I've already made arrangements to rent a really pretty dress for the wedding. I know that I may not be a person of high status or class, 
but I swear to at least look like one for the wedding. Surely you can endure my presence at the table while you're standing up on the altar with Charlie, right? You really expect me to believe that you know how to pick a dress? That would be suitable for the kind of wedding Charlie and I are going to have. I seriously doubt that you would recognize good taste if you got slapped in the face with a Louis Vuitton bag, huh? Anyways, I don't care how good you can make yourself look. The truth is that the moment you open your mouth, everyone will discover what an illiterate little street rat you are. I mean, do you even know what order you're supposed to use the cutlery? When there is more than one of them by the plate? Do you even know how to use a knife and fork at all? Or do you just eat with your hands and then lick the flavor of your fingers like some kind of caveman? Ugh, don't worry. I think I know that one. Use the knife to do the choppy bits. And then you use the fork when you need to stab things, right? Wow. Don't burst a vein in your head trying to remember that, okay? But like I said, you are not going to be eating at the family table. Instead, I thought we would just put you outside in the hall with a plate of food. That way, you'll be away from everyone else and can make all the mess you want. Doesn't that sound lovely? You mean you would really have me eat in the hallway? At my own brother's wedding? Of course. I mean, the reality is, is that no one at the wedding is going to want to eat with you anyways. I'm sorry, but you just don't belong with all the elegant and well-dressed people who are going to be attending the wedding. And I think that you just have to accept that nobody wants to see you at the wedding, let alone share a table or converse with you. I see. Well, then maybe the least you could do is let me just sit cross-legged in the aisle and eat there instead of in the hallway. I mean, I'm quite small and don't take up that much space anyway. Surely that would be okay, right? No, because I'm telling you that people would rather gouge their eyes out than see you at the wedding. The less you pollute their memories, the better. It's best if you just disappear from the face of the earth, really. But since that isn't going to happen, we just have to make arrangements so that the least number of people know that you're the strain on the family. Besides, what would you even do at a table with my guests? It would be a total insult to them. I doubt that you even know how to breathe in the presence of upper class people. You're telling me that you're really serious about this? Even though I have traveled across the world to be here for my brother's wedding, you're really not even going to let me sit at the family table? Just because you have some twisted vendetta against me? Now. I think you're forgetting something very, very important here. It's not just Charlie's wedding. It's also my wedding. You do realize that, don't you? Everyone knows that on the day of the wedding, the wife is the queen and the husband is her servant in terms of trying to please her. As my future sister-in-law, that should mean that you want to do everything to make me happy today too, right? Well, I guess you're not exactly wrong about any of what you've just said. But still, I can't help but feel like this is completely unjust. Well, all I'm saying is that if we look into who is invited, then I think you'll find you have to bow down to me. I have so many people here from my side of the family who I've invited here. Meanwhile, you and your brother are the only losers as far as Charlie's side goes, which pretty much means that all of the wedding gifts and cash that we get are going to be from my guests, right? Well, again, I guess that's a point that I really can't deny. That's right. So those are just more reasons why it's better for everyone. If you're invisible and silent and forgotten at all, I mean, if people know that you're Charlie's sister, then they're going to start asking where the rest of the family is. Don't you think so? So basically, you are going to save everyone a lot of trouble if you just hide in the closet and stay out of sight. I see. Well, I guess if you really feel that strongly about me doing that, then I don't really have any say in the matter, do I? That's more like it. Although, you really should have just obeyed me and agreed with me in the first place. We would have saved so much time. Helen, what are you doing here in the hallway? This is my wedding day, and you're hiding out like a criminal. Is something wrong? You're supposed to be inside with the other guests. You know, the ones who came to celebrate with me. Charlie, you saw me? Weren't you busy with the wedding and the vows and everything? 
that's the thing. I was waiting for the ceremony to begin, and I noticed that you were nowhere to be seen. So I went out to look for you. I was worried about you, Helen. You're my sister, and you're supposed to give a speech today. I didn't want you to miss that. And then I heard someone say that there was a guest in the hallway, and I came to see that it was you. But, Charlie, this is what you wanted, right? What are you talking about? Why would I want you to be out here in the hallway? What kind of nonsense is that? I just... I didn't want to make a fool of myself. I didn't want people to wonder why you only invited me to your wedding. Why I was the only family member you had. Helen, I'm sorry, but I don't understand. Why would that matter to me or to anyone? Where is this coming from? Charlie, don't play dumb with me. You know what I'm talking about. You're a successful doctor, and I'm a nobody. I can't even pay my bills. I don't fit in with your fancy friends and your high-class wedding. I don't have anything in common with them. Helen, stop it. You're not making any sense. I don't care about any of that. You're my sister, Helen. Why would I ever be ashamed of you? You're the best thing that ever happened to me, Helen. Charlie, Jenny told me. She told me that you were ashamed of me. Jenny said that to you? Yes, she did. She made me feel like I was a burden to you. But don't worry, Charlie. I won't bother you anymore. I'll just stay out of your way. Helen, listen to me. Jenny is lying. She doesn't know anything about us. I'm not ashamed of you, Helen. I'm proud to have you as my sister. And I want you to be here with me. But, Charlie, that's not what Jenny said. Jenny is wrong, Helen. If I was ashamed of you, why would I invite you to my wedding? It doesn't make any sense, Helen. The only thing that makes sense is that Jenny is trying to hurt us. Ah, uh, Charlie. I'm so sorry for causing trouble on your wedding day. Helen, you have nothing to be sorry about. You didn't do anything wrong. It's Jenny who should be sorry. And I'm going to make sure she pays for what she did. Hey, Helen. How's the food out there in the hallway? Did you enjoy eating on the floor like a dog? Oh, yes. Thank you so much for your concern. The food was delicious, really. You spared no expense on the catering. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm also sorry about what happened earlier. You know, with me tearing your dress apart. Oh, so you admit it? You did it on purpose, right? I had a feeling you did. I was shocked when you came out of nowhere and attacked me like a wild animal. Well, it's not like it was a big deal, right? I mean, your dress was so cheap and ugly anyway. Can you imagine if someone did that to a beautiful dress like mine? But don't worry, I'll make it up to you. I'll buy you something nice and decent someday. By the way, where are you now? I looked for you in the hallway, but I couldn't find you. Ugh, well, I just went to the bathroom for a minute. That's all. Really, Helen, you should have known better. You should have known that you don't belong here. Nobody wants you here. You know that, right? The only reason I sent you to the hallway was to spare the people at the table from having to sit with you. How dare you, Jenny? How dare you treat my sister like that? What? What are you talking about? Jenny, are you blind? Are you stupid? Do you have any idea what you've done? You chased my sister away from our wedding. You made her sit in the hallway like a pariah. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Are you kidding me? Did you see how she was dressed? She told me she bought a fancy dress for our wedding, but showed up in rags. How could you not notice that, Charlie? Hold on, Jenny. Let me get this straight. You kicked my sister out of our wedding because of her dress? Is that what you're saying? Well, not because of that. There's also the fact that she doesn't fit in. She has nothing to say to anyone. Don't you see that she doesn't belong with the guests I invited? What are you talking about, Jenny? Why does it matter if she fits in? This is not a social club. This is our wedding. And everyone here is here for us. Yeah, but she's different, Charlie. She's uneducated. She only has a high school diploma. How can she mingle with the people here? Don't you see my point, Charlie? Jenny, you're crazy. Do you hear yourself? I don't even know what to say to you. But I was only thinking of you, Charlie. And when Helen seemed to listen to me, she agreed. 
And you didn't think I would be angry with you for lying to my sister for my sake. But I thought you and Helen didn't get along that well. You haven't seen each other for years, isn't that true? That's only because Helen has a busy life and a faraway job. It doesn't mean I don't care about her or miss her. We've talked about this, Jenny. But I really thought you had some issues with her. Well, you thought wrong. I owe her everything, Jenny. You know that Helen and I lost our mom when I was in middle school. After that, my sister gave up her dreams and took care of me. She raised me until I graduated from high school. Oh, well, I guess I didn't realize how much that meant to you. Well, you should have. I've told you this many times, but you never listened to me, did you? No, I did. I just forgot about all the wedding stress. But I remember now. I do. Don't lie to me, Jenny. You're only saying that because I'm reminding you. But I see now that you don't care about my sister. You just want to get rid of her because you don't like her. Please, Charlie, trust me. It's not like that. You know what? I can't do this. The wedding is off. I'm taking Helen and we're leaving. Hold on a second. No, please don't leave. I'm begging you. I've changed my mind. Your sister can stay. Tell her to come in. Please, I'm sorry. It's okay. I don't mind. You can't just cancel the wedding. Helen, are you there? I want to tell you something. I've thought about it, and I want you to be at the wedding. Oh, really? What made you change your mind? I was actually enjoying it out here. It's so peaceful, and the floor is so clean. It's nice. No, we can't have you in the hallway. You have to come in. Please, I need you to. I think we all need to talk. Charlie got mad at you for this, and that's why? Well... When I told him the truth, he was furious. No, I just... Well, because you're my husband's sister and we're going to be family, so you should be a part of the wedding. I was so wrong to ask you to leave. Yeah, you were. I don't get why you did that. What do you mean? I mean, it's obvious that the groom would be upset if you kicked his family out of the wedding. I don't mind doing what you asked, but I guess it made Charlie see you for who you really are. So, I guess that's a good thing. Oh, wait. Are you really Helen? Or are you someone else? That's right, Jenny. It's your dumb sister-in-law. But if I'm the dumb one, then what does that make you? I guess Charlie is finding out the hard way, huh? Wait, so you were acting dumb this whole time? I wouldn't call it acting. I just wanted to see how far you would go with your lies and schemes. But what about the dress? Did you really choose that awful dress on purpose? You got me there. <laughs> I did pick that dress to provoke you, but I didn't expect you to rip it off me. You tricked me. How could you? Well, you have to face the truth. Charlie just told me the wedding is off. Thank God for that. I wouldn't want to be related to you, and you wouldn't want to be related to me. Just wait a minute. I know I made a mistake. But I love Charlie. I want to marry him. Really? And you thought kicking me out of the wedding was a good way to show that? You know, I heard some of the drama that was going on inside the hall. What do you mean you heard that? It was hard to miss. I was sitting here in this quiet hall, but your dad was screaming at you. I bet everyone at the wedding heard him. He said you were so close to marrying a doctor, and you blew it. He said he bought a new car because he thought Charlie would help him pay for it. And now you have to pay him back. No, that has nothing to do with our wedding. Please, Helen, you have to help me. I wasn't after Charlie's money. But you have a lot of debt, don't you? Is that why you wanted to marry my brother? You heard my dad yelling about my debt? That's right. You thought you were getting rid of me but you gave me the best seat in the house. All I had to do was listen through the wall, and I heard everything loud and clear. Well, I guess that's all there is to say, right? Wait, no, please. Don't leave me. Well, I don't know what else to say, except that you'll have to pay for the wedding yourself, and you'll probably have to give back all the gifts.
Helen, I'm so sorry for what you went through today. I had no idea Jenny was such a monster. How could she do that to you? Well, I'm glad you saw her true colors before you married her. I was hoping you would wake up and see what she really is. You mean you knew she was like that all along? Pretty much. Ever since I met her, she acted like she was better than me. And I couldn't believe you were going to marry her. I thought you would have more sense, being a doctor and all. I get it, but I really thought she was a nice girl. She was always so sweet to me, but I can't believe you put up with her insults and abuse for my sake. Well, you're my brother, and I didn't want to cause any trouble until you figured it out yourself. Anyway, I'm glad you did. I guess it's a happy ending after all, right? You know, this is another reason why I admire you so much, Helen. You're such a strong person. I don't think I could have made it this far without your help. Yeah, I guess I am pretty awesome, huh? But don't be too hard on yourself. You worked hard to become a doctor. Helen, thank you. I can't say it enough. You know, for my speech, I wanted to tell you how proud I am of your achievements. But maybe I'll save it for when you find the right one. You're right. But I can't wait to hear it. Well, you will. But don't worry about me today. I'm always here for you, no matter what. But that's why I do worry, and I'm so grateful for you. It's no problem at all. And thank you for caring about me. I'm happy that we're still close after all these years. And you even used some of my art as decorations for your wedding. That meant so much to me. I loved those drawings. And you should know that even Jenny's guests were impressed by them and asked who the artist was. So thank you for letting me use them for free. I appreciate it. And I think you're an amazing artist, even though you had to sacrifice your dreams for me. Well, I haven't given up on my dreams, you know. Yes, I had to put them on hold for you, but I still practice every day. And I know I'll make it big someday. That means a lot to me, Helen. I'm so lucky to have you as my sister. Thank you for everything today. I can't thank you enough. Well, I guess I just have to say that I'm looking forward to the next wedding, and hopefully it goes better than this one. Oh, and I almost forgot something really important. What is it? Jenny, are you there? I need to talk to you. You owe me money for the dress you ruined today. Wait a minute. You ruined my wedding and you still want money from me? Can't we just forget about each other and move on? I'll be happy to do that when you pay me for the dress. It was a $5,000 rental, by the way. And if you don't pay me, I'll sue. Are you kidding me? You paid five grand for that dress? You wore that dress to prank me, right? You wasted $5,000 on that? That's right. But don't worry, I didn't pay that much because I expected you to rip it. Which you did. Oh, please. You just want to squeeze five grand out of me, don't you? No, this is about justice. This is about making you pay for what you did. And by the way, I remember now. You're that failed artist, aren't you? Your brother told me how he ruined your dreams. But you know what I think? I think you're a joke. Your art is garbage. And you never had a chance. You don't know what you're talking about. You're so clueless. It's pathetic. You're the pathetic one. Did you see the art in the hall? It was a stunning underwater scene. It was art. Something you could never appreciate. Your ignorant mind couldn't grasp its beauty. Funny though, because I painted that. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. I mean that Charlie asked me to display it at his wedding. And I agreed. I actually like that painting a lot, so I guess you have good taste. Thanks for the compliment. What? You're lying. You painted that? That's right. And you'll be getting the bill for my dress. Have a nice life, Jenny. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Just stop. Helen, please, let's forget this. Wow. You're desperate. As soon as you find out I'm a famous artist, you try to be nice to me, but we both know that you didn't mean to compliment me. You just did it by accident. But thanks anyway. No, please don't leave me. Wait, 
I can change. I swear. Yeah, right. I'm done with you. But you should think about how you treated me. Everyone knows what a horrible person you are. That was the last time I ever spoke to Jenny. I cut her off from my life completely. She had to pay for the wedding she ruined. And for her debt. Jenny took on more debt to cover those, but she had no skills or experience to earn money. She soon hit rock bottom. She tried to con her parents into helping her, but she dragged them down with her. All because of Jenny's greed and stupidity. As for me, I went home after the wedding and kept following my passion for art. Next year, my art will be displayed in an exhibition for the first time. I can't wait to invite Charlie and show him how proud I am of him. I still have the speech I wrote for his wedding, and I hope to give it to him someday.